in this deck with two Sword of the Fallen. You can't even get them all, if that makes sense. You're like, you waste charges if you draw your second sword. Um, but we're at the point now where I think, I think we're on five here or four? We're on four, you said, right? Yeah, with the one yeah, deck. Yeah, four in. for Briarthorn. So everybody's pushing their luck with this Paladin deck. And it will be interesting to see where it ends up because they don't want to take the secrets out. They just don't want to draw them in their hand. And everybody's going to realize that it's just not worth it. Play no secrets. Well, that's that's always the option, right? But then you lose the people who do because they're pretty good. Yeah. It's, it's just a thing that happens throughout Hearthstone's history with, with secret cheating. It's, it's always fascinated me because I'm fascinated by the most interesting of things. All right, well, we're getting into game. Monsanto thinking about... What does a turn one prize plunder mean? Um, challenges Aldor attendant with a dagger up. And that's about it. So yep. hold on to it. First Ooh, day of school. Double first day of school. Not the punishing turn zero card it used to be. Obviously still a punishing card. Wonder if we might see a coin intrepid initiate here. Won't he want to activate it with first day of school? No. Yeah. I'll activate it next turn, just get the use out of the coin for it as well. Yep. This is a real weird hand for Monsanto. Uh it's it's pretty much Kazakis, that's the hand. Other than that, yep. not well, real much else to do. That's what happens when you put three cards in your deck that do anything. Sometimes you draw one of them, and it does something. Rogue's such a funny deck. I'm going to sit here and insult it for ten minutes just for a change of pace. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I've, I've, I've cast Rogue every other way I possibly can. Briarthorn Thorn. sees slow start. Yep. And when you... See so slow start, it gives you the opportunity as Paladin to just kind of play stuff out there. I like the fact that still holding on to the coin. No real reason to activate this Intrepid Initiate now. Just get stuff on the board. And then has options next turn. If, say, an Octobot comes down, could coin out a Carrial Roam to deal with that without giving the benefit over to Monsanto. Monsanto's hmm. issues seem to just kind of be... Yeah. Stacking further and further. Okay, all right, this is stuff. Yeah, this actually gets to do something, right? Actually, got to decide whether he wants to play Vanessa or the Wand Thief, which is not the most straightforward. Uh, Vanessa would give an Intrepid Initiate because I was played second. Mm -hmm. um, it's more power on board, but I suppose less flexible because Intrepid Initiate uh, is... <laughs> Uh, I'd say most of the time worse than a rant than a discovered mage spell, but the board presence and also just mana uh, efficiency because the one thief eventually will be drawn again. Yeah, uh, matters and that could matter in terms of like field contact, uh, or maybe he just doesn't know what spell he needs at the moment to combat this particular situation. Yeah, I mean Brythorn has played very sensibly in that he's he's managed to put down decent attack without actually revealing what on earth's in his hand. So Monsanto has very little clue from what he's seen so far. That's a a trait of first day of school as well. It's like they're too busy playing these one drops to actually play the things that are in their deck. So you don't know what they drew. You can go by the mulligan, that's about it. Mm. So Carol Roam doesn't have a lot of value here. So just no holy spells in hand. Uh, well, these are pretty good. Yeah, play that thing now. Just, just play it. Bladed Cultist. One of the most terrifying cards you can get from first day because of it's just a 2-3 for one mana. I want to see Brython actually take care of some of this stuff now, though. Seems to be playing a little bit more considered than usual, a little bit more comfortable than usual as well, Brythorn, to me. 
Well, I mean, this is a big week for Briarthorn. Currently at the next to the bottom of the standings. The only player below him in points is Impact. Uh, especially with Killing All Day picking up a win, he'll be guaranteed seven. Muzzy's at a guaranteed six for the week. Mm -hmm. Hackers uh, already Briarthorn. picked up two. Yep. And then Briarthorn at five. So needs a big week worth of play. And then probably oh, another good week the week after as well. So, yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't seem overly nervous. It's almost almost a relaxation that comes with maybe he's slightly expecting it now. So maybe that's helped him relax a touch, which would be great. I've not once in my life seen Briar Thor nervous. Or it's impossible to tell if he's nervous or not. <laughs> that's That's fair. You definitely got excited when um, when he popped off, so... Yeah, because it's the only time it's ever happened. <laughs> and this is actually, you know, despite the first days of school, second yeah. day of school, whatever. Um, oh, Conical, that's interesting. Um, uh, his hand is very heavy. He's got Lady of the Adrian, Libra of Hope, and uh, the Libra of Judgment with no ways to discount them except for Hero Room discounting Libra of Hope just ever so slightly. Um, yeah. So he's in, he's probably in some trouble here. Monsanto, despite a slow start, has been able to pick things up considerably. Now does have the option to play Kazakis on a relatively clean board. Uh, there'll just be one minion up, which actually gives him tons of options. Uh, of what golems to pick. You could go with, uh, you know, give your minions plus two, plus two, and be pretty confident that a lot of this stuff yep. is going to stick, especially uh, if he wants to go for some value trades. I guess he's wondering, like, one of the options he needs to consider is whether he wants to Kazaka's 10 Wu next turn. And this turn, he could just dominate the board with all his little stuff. And then he just yeah. buys into that situation where he kind of closes out with four lots of golems in two turns. I don't think he's going to do that, but... Oh. He's going even okay, slower he than that. Yeah, he wants a clean board, like a fully clean board. I mean, how does Paladin win if it doesn't have things, I guess? Well, Cone of Cold's won. Yeah, it could go like Novice Zapper, then Kona Cold, uh, like Foxy <laughs> Fraud, and then play an Oh My Yog, and then That's actually have mean. a good hold on the board. Yeah. At least for for a while, yeah. Hasn't played a Libram at all, right? Yeah, so all of his Paladin things are kind of not going anywhere fast. Yeah. Wonder. Yeah, whatever he chooses here, there's there's good turns. I like I like your suggestion. He can just cone the things on the right, and that way he doesn't have to necessarily use the zapper. But the zapper's going to have little use anyway. So uh, you want a three to the board, you might as well get that usage out of it that TJ described, and he chooses to do that. And the Omar Yogs are really annoying. Oh well, not now. It's not. <laughs> oh! Wow. I feel like just the juice soundboard when Jandis is played that just screams before it even sees the minions because it's always ridiculous. Putting the illusion on the gray bow here. I mean, I think it's just the right choice because you actually want the gray bow to die because that yeah, means me think. Uh, it gets to transfer on one of your other minions and then you could trade that off and then, you know, have another gray bow that doesn't have an illusion on it. It also could 
uh, make this turn a little bit awkward for Briardorn because he might go Carol Rome coin hand of a doll and attack in. Oh. And then he's essentially got nothing left uh, because he can't even trade into the near fire blade anymore. And the Jandis might oh. just have. Oh! oh that is one ill. If it goes to the Jandis. Oh, okay, it didn't go to the Jandis. Now he's like he wants to trade into the Jandis because he doesn't want it to be shadow stepped or Tenwu. That is just brutal, brutal. Maybe it would have panned out uh, the same way. Maybe if he'd gone for that, and it turns out the near fireblade was the uh, uh, the illusion, he still would have traded over Jandis at the end of the day. But so alas, options. yeah. Nice work for Monsanto there. It's quiet. Too and he's bought himself the rights to have this turn. <laughs> yeah, just the, the old field contact, Kazakis. <laughs> and then, oh, oh yeah, for, get a gray belt too. Sure, why not? I remember the first time I hadn't checked the spoiler list the first time I ever lost to Grey Bow I was like what is this card this was it was actually in a deck it wasn't a Jandis deck it was just a druid deck I'm like how can anybody ever beat this card turns out it's a bit slow normally yeah this one is this is just feels so over for yep for Briarthorn I mean we're getting close to just lethal damage this is 10 uh, double Wicked hope. Stab is 18. Yeah, got Libra of Hope, but that's a f just a, it's his entire turn. Yeah, and then Lady Liadrin, when he chooses to play it, another entire turn. Oh, yeah. Also, he just... Can't oh, he's going to block the Libra of Hope, too? Oh, yeah. And this Lesser Golem is poisonous and deal damage, I believe. Another one. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I don't see how Brythorn... When Paladin loses the board, unless they've got something crazy lined up for the immediate next turn, they never win. Or very rarely win. So and Brythorn doesn't have something crazy lined up, lined up for the immediate next turn. Oh. Efficient is sufficient. Give me that. Last one. Oh. I think Monsanto can feel free to stop there, take a value trade, though he did play Double Cold Neophyte. The Librams are incredibly expensive. Briarthorn can't really play a single thing this turn. Lethal represented on board, and Monsanto takes game one. Very convincingly, kind of awkward hands for both players, just in different ways. Briarthorn had uh, a great early board, but then fizzled out. Monsanto had nothing early, but then peaked uh so um not the standard libra paladin versus uh miracle rogue game it looked just for all the world like monsanto was going to get stomped there on about turn three and yeah just didn't <laughs> i don't think both were necessarily did anything wrong right it's just the way that the the hand worked out he did hold the coin for a long time but this was the play really when monsanto Okay, he, he ripped a Jandis off the top on turn six. It's always nice, but he then won the Battle of Mind games so convincingly. It wasn't just like, oh, this is a small win. You traded funny. It just totally wrecked the next turn to close out any chance he had of losing. Nicely done. Uh, Monsanto, another player who, apart from a couple of, I don't know, moments where he's played something embarrassing he's played very solidly all year and just not picking up the points week on week i feel yeah he's literally every week he's made it to the decider matchup right six for six which is cool but it means he's also never won his group <laughs> yeah and he's, you know, only he's won never like just gotten that free eight. ticket to the to the top eight and has only made it to the top eight uh Oh, he's made it to top eight three times, right? Because you got eight points going into the week. No, because he reached a he reached a semi-final, so he's only done it twice. Ah, oh, twice. Okay. 
So yeah, that's that's a bad strike rate. Two out two out of five going into this week. But like you say, also he's done it the hard way. What looks like every time, um, or at least every time, but one at very best. And you don't want to be in this this game every single week. It's just mentally draining to have to spend your whole day waiting for one Hearthstone match. Uh, yeah. People are like, oh, it's one Hearthstone match. What's the problem? Well, most of these players are kind of perfectionists. They'll if they've given 24 hours to play test a matchup, they'll probably use a lot of those hours play testing the matchup, and it's just draining. Warrior time. Yep. And Briarthorn has done a 180 on his uh, Warrior from a previous week where it felt like he didn't have enough value in his deck to beat some of the slower matchups. Uh, and instead now has put in Rattlegore and Cthune into the Warrior deck just to make sure he wins against some of the late game decks. And then he banned Priest. Um, uh, well, the, uh, Rattlegore is not for Priest. It feels like the, his deck is specifically designed for Warrior Control Warrior Mirrors and Control Warlock. Um, maybe some Paladin thrown in there a little bit if it goes super late, which it can often do against Paladin, who just feels like they never run out of stuff. Um, the Cthune for the Priest, though. The Rattlegore, I agree, because you can't play it against Priest because they just beat you with it. <laughs> but Cthune's good. But yeah, fair enough. Um, if he doesn't feel he's going to get it done. Uh, I don't like control decks that don't have some element of late game. Uh, unless they've got a very specific matchup. Like, we saw the low curve priests in some lineups. I don't mind that because they're there to beat like, the druids of this world. But Yeah. All right. So, <sighs> difficult turn here for Monsanto. I do think that there's value in going for field contact and shadow step because he does have a decent turn lined up next turn with uh, field contact, Vanessa Van Cleef, and uh, the brain freeze. Um, and yep, Monsanto agrees. And I feel like he can also get away with this play because he will he can do that, which will draw cards uh, and put more resources in. And then uh, beyond that has Jandis as reload. Yeah. And from the uh, Vanessa Van Cleef, we'll get a Venomous Scorpid, which is actually quite decent. Oh, and that's a nice card to fill the gap before Jandis. Yep, he can choose to be very greedy here if he wants to. He doesn't have to do any of that stuff this turn. He's taking two against a control warrior. He can uh, wait his mana increases a little bit. I think he might as well, right? Foxy Fraud would be the sure. absolute bonkers draw right here. Doesn't hit it, but still draws a couple cards. Adds Venomous Scorpion to his hand. Gets a Kazamakus! So he's got all of the, the good stuff now to go in with. Doesn't feel like a lot, but it never does, and it often turns into a lot very quickly. Just because I can see Brythorn's hand. <laughs> he can kill a lot of things. Rancor against Rogue is particularly scary, obviously. Yeah. The issue becomes, though, is because you're not pressuring yourself and uh, because, like, that, the pressure that you do have takes, like, turns of setup. Yep. Um, Rogue can continue to build boards but acquire resources as they're building boards. Uh, and then if you're not pressuring them, they have all the time in the world to look for their Octobots, activate their Octobots themselves, discount Tenwu, Alexstrasza, and Wicked Stabs. And then really put the herd on in the late game. You need a lot of armor to be able to outheal the amount of damage that rogues can so deal, even with just their deck. Not even considering some of the damage they can get from outside of their deck uh, with, you know, Wand Thieves, uh, Jandis by minions, the Venomous Scorpid that he got from Vanessa Van Cleef. Yep. And sometimes that stuff's repeatable as well with Shadow Steps and such like, so. There is a lot of stuff there, but also Warriors are so good at killing a lot of stuff. And with this Cthune, he does have an end point. Like, it's a long way off and, and so on, but yeah. oh, you there is never an end get point where you win the game. Yeah, the Rogue has decked out like 15 turns really? where you can play Cthune. I guess it is, yeah. I guess it is. 
Even with the smaller field contacts. You don't Cthulhu until the last three or four cards. Usually, we've seen exceptions before everybody... Yeah, it's even if you're hyper drawing, you get draws from. You hit double Corsair mm. Cash, get draws from every swing of your uh, your yeah. Outriders axes. Um, you, you're still because you started the game with four more cards in your deck, and even potentially more if you consider that with like Cargath Blade Fist and Athletic Studies also discovering potentially Card Cargath Blade Fist. It takes a while. So Heart of Cthulhu is a clear no matter what here. Barthorn just rips Heart of Cthulhu and then attacks Maybe. whatever wasn't the illusion. Mm hmm Wonder if he's thinking of other clears, but this one's fine, obviously. The only problem with this is you've just killed two one health minions with a card that can clear a big white board. But it's nice and clean, so it appeals. Yep, gets a draw card as well. Well, yep. you could shield slam, but I think he card. needs to keep cycling a little bit more. Yeah, even though he can't do, you know, the Cthulhu that you've, you've convinced me I was very wide of the mark on that one. He still wants to draw as many cards as possible, cycle through the deck, get removal to try and keep up with the rogue. The good news is that a lot of his cards get like several for one, so he doesn't need to kill every card that a one for one basis which is obviously Can't really helpful Job's done. this is all good things for monsanto has octobot guardian hawk merchant that he can pull the trigger on whenever he feels like his hand has reached the critical mass of deal damage to my opponent's face status <laughs> yep Until then, he just has to not get demoralized by Briarthorn killing everything he plays for the foreseeable future. Yeah, there's this stuff, isn't there? I mean, that hand is just so much removal. Yeah. So the generating awakens is just another wave of removal that the rogue can't deal with. Monsanto also has made no inroads on the health total, which is super relevant, of course. Well, That's actually, keeping the, the ten wood combos. I mean, keeping the armor check like this is actually a lot, right? Briarthorn has played armor vendor, Rancor for four minions, and has hit the armor up button like two or three times. So if you consider it that way, Monsanto's actually made a big dent in the life total. Because Briarthorn's at 31 and has gained like 15 plus armor so far this Shh. game. Sure, okay. And, and he's still made it still to come. He's got the wiggle room to do things like this, right? Where he's really not doing much. He's just acquiring resources that he will then reduce with Guardian Og Merchant uh, and Efficient Octobot. He's got both Wicked Stabs, uh, and he's got Tenwu in hand, uh, which is a, a ton of potential uh, burst um, that he's reducing. Yeah, I mean, look at this hand. For, for three mana, you can have the world... If you're it hits Bulwark. Okay. That's Not a good one. Tap the Corsair so Cash. No. What? It's great. It's one round of attacks. Cuts out all the combo, obviously. This combo in particular. Yeah, so this looks like a Seeker Passage turn. Unless Alex Shadow Step that sets up for Alex Tenwu Dab Step twenty eight. The next turn. Hmm. I mean, it is a two turn lethal setup, but we can see the bulwark. All right, he's gonna go for it. Yeah. Oh, Ruined Orb. I mean, that's damage. And again, like, uh, Bork is, I mean, Bork is sick in this position, but Briarthorn has to, like, put on some type of counteroffensive. Because Monsanto is just I mean, going, right? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it's necessary, right? If yeah. Briarthorn didn't have Bulwark here, he would sure. just die. I think we're arguing from two sides of the, the same coin. Like, it's definitely going yeah. to stop him from dying. It's really, really important. But also, it's not a game-ending card as such. It just... Yes. Yeah. Game delaying, which might be a game turning card in some situations. So yeah, I think we we're arguing from the yeah the same right. side from, on this occasion. From from this stage, Monsanto just needs to make sure that he puts stuff on the or tries to put stuff on the board each turn and dagger up and hit this bulwark each turn. Uh, it's... coerce. To have an answer to like Ysera or like yeah. a shield maiden. Um, As he thinks he can use the cards, are there any cards in his deck that maybe do like small amounts of damage or maybe he can get more? Just picked card draw. Okay. I guess the one thing I'm right. looking for mask, mask here. Or yep. Or Bruned Orb again would be fine. Potion of Illusion? Potion into Neophyte I mean, into 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 Wandmaker again, probably. Yeah. Into look for mask. Yeah. He didn't dagger up this turn though. Yeah, that feels awkward. And he's just throwing out a bunch of stuff that can get rank or away. So that like delays this by a whole nother turn. Is that a rancor off the top? It certainly was. If I if I know my card art, I know my card art. Massive pickup. That's so good for Brythorn. How many should we say this combo was? 16 28, right? 28, but obviously he's got a Shadow Step left in the deck. He also has Octobot that can reduce it even further and make more stuff be able to come out. No, I just wanted my baseline because obviously Brythorn's escaping there and he's still got Shield Maidens to come. But we do need to keep an eye on how much he has to actually do. All right. Um, so Monsanto has a Secret Passage. Two prize plunders, Foxy Fraud, Field Contact, and Mancrick left in his deck. Ooh, Steward of Scrolls. <laughs> that does allow a dagger up to fit in, and he could find, like, say, another Wicked Stab. Potion of Illusion potion again. Potion of Illusion again? <sighs> you could but potion you could of Illusion like your a... Alex later, right? And then potion the Alex. And the Tenwu. With what mana? Mm. Trying to get there, TJ. He could like potion a man crick. Ah. Or if like any of this stuff sticks, right? Okay, so it won't be reduced further. But the damage does not have to all be done in a single turn. It can be done over multiple turns. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he can do it all in one go, but he can do a, a 28 and then maybe a, a 16 or something if he if he can set it up right. Yeah. Maybe... Yeah, yeah, even I, even I don't have 14 mana. I, I let YouTube chat have maybe 11 or 12, and I sometimes go one over that just to be sure, but I don't go to Raven levels of mana. Yeah. Well, the uh, Want Thief stayed on board, so he can potion that. Uh, he can actually... No, he can do the... He can get the Ten Wu back and the Want Thief back. So he'd Want Thief, uh, attack with the Want Thief, Ten Wu the Want Thief, play the Want Thief again, then potion those. So he'd still have a one-mana Ten Wu in hand to preserve that combo, right. and he'd get an additional Mage spell. And the Want Thief attacking also gives uh, gets rid of another charge of Bulwark. Okay, Counterspell's good. 
Okay, potion these two. Probably play the Wand Thief and then Counterspell. I'm trying to work out but something where you want to step the ten woo, so you have two ten woos. <laughs> well, I mean, the the Shadow Step's going to be on a ten woo anyway. Right. So he's going to have two ten woos no matter yeah, what. You don't need to panic it. Yeah. <laughs> potion! Another potion! Now this you one's definitely not potion. He's completely out of value. I want to ten woo everything. Yep. Five cards left. Yeah. So, Only one um, shot left on the weapon, though, and then the game kicks off. Yep. I think Monsanto just gets there from here. I mean, this is so much damage. He's got a man crick left in the deck, a foxy fraud, two prize pointers, and a secret passage. So no, not really any damage left in the deck outside of the uh, ogre from the man crick. Mm -hmm. That might be. Uh, you first. know, which yeah could be a problem. So Alex Ten Wu, and then Alex Shadow Step the Ten Wu. Ten Wu again. Alex twenty four plus twelve. 36 damage. Sure. It's one off, but could you could just just do all of that this turn? All right, n uh, one off from lethal over two turns, but yeah, yeah, and, like fit in a that dagger up. That was clear. Or a, or a Pex's blast or whatever. Uh, it's just about the order, right? What could mess up? What is there anything that could mess up with the? You don't want anything to be traded into by the Kargath if it actually ever leaves the board. And 10 armor would be pretty nasty. All right, so then you just unload the Wicked Stabs and the Apexis Blast this turn. Sure, yep. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you probably trade in the one. There's still a Rancor in the deck, because one of them was generated. I don't think it... Ch uh, does it change the clock? It actually might. Uh, Next turn he has 20... Next turn he has 24, 25 with the weapon swing. If Rancor plus armor up would make that... Shield Maiden? Uh, 26. Or Shield Maiden, yeah. I guess it doesn't matter. If in doubt, push the one though, because it's such a close call. It, might, it like we're in the world where you can see that it could matter if we're not sure. So you just push the one, right? Yep, and that'll do it. Wow. Why well, not able to get that big armor like you said at the start? Um, the early turns, Monsanto chipped away, and Bythorn never got those big armor swing here with the prime. Just never got to use it. So. Over a long, long time ago, Monsanto started building up this um, with the help yeah. of potions and obviously the usual way you win the drove. And gets it done, but it's still quite close in terms of health to at the end there, even though it looked quite easy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there there still was tests for, you know, Briarthorn to pass, right? There was still damage left and a little bit of damage left in Monsanto's deck slash hand. He, could, he had like two more waves of minions as well, plus Olgra and weapon attacks each turn. Uh, so it did get pretty close. Briarthorn was able to find the removal for the early game. But, I mean, that's what Rogue has afforded the luxury of being able to do in that matchup, right? They, they play standard or whatever for the first four or five turns, try and get like a, a lead or push and chip, chip damage. And then once they realize that tempo is not going to be the answer, and playing minions on board is not going to be the answer, then they switch to this combo game plan. And that's what the Ten Wu Alex Wicked Stabs allows you to do. He got a little bit of help from finding like Shadow Step from randomly generated stuff, uh, the additional damage he needed from Potions of Illusions. But I said that's what that's what the deck does, right? Yes. Yeah. You um, early. Yeah. So uh, you're able to reach huge amounts of life totals, even five charges of the Bulwark and ended the game at 31 health. So, uh, for the warrior there, it's just about out healing the insane amounts of combo damage that this deck can do, which is very difficult if they're just allowed all the time in the world. And thus, Monsanto takes a 2-0 lead and, you know, uh, a rough spot for Briarthorn. I can't help but feel that maybe his 
the hopes of trying to fight out of uh, relegation are slowly slipping away because um, he's got an uphill climb. His own Miracle Rogue is the only deck left, and it's a unique version of it. Yeah, I've been looking forward to hearing you describe this. You, you, you teased at the start that we might not even get to see it. Well, we're going to get to see it three times if Briarthorn is to get through this match. So what is it exactly that you, you find so fun about this? So he doesn't play Colt Neophytes. Mm -hmm. uh, instead plays animated broomsticks. And then he doesn't play uh, brain freezes and instead plays ticket masters. Right. So uh, it's very board centric, right? It's very not don't disrupt and don't kill my opponent's things, but instead just like always have a board to generate. And I was racking my brain trying to find a matchup that that might be better. And the only one I could come up with is like uh, Rush Warrior. That's my right? only one as well. <laughs> yep. Uh, because even in the mirror match, uh, cards like Cold Neophyte and Brain Freeze allow for some much needed disruption and tempo swings where Animated Broomstick can find that, but Ticketmaster, not really. Uh, because Ticketmaster by itself just has no effect on the one just played on the board. It yep. you know, has effect when it dies and then and then you start like drawing through your deck aggressively. Uh, so I think it, it helps in the Rush Warrior matchup because you still have the Temple tools to kind of get ahead of them early. But then you also have the ability to fight back when they have that overwhelm me with stats turn, which always happens in the mid game with Rush Warrior versus, uh, uh, versus Miracle Rogue. So there's Rush Warrior still left in Monsanto's lineup. So if Briarthorn can take the mirror uh, you know, maybe, you know, the, the tech comes into play. One thing about Ticketmaster is it's statted well for contesting efficient Octobot. Sure. So if Monsanto plays the standard, quote-unquote, efficient, efficient Octobot here, Barthorn just gets to coin Ticketmaster and say, go ahead. Sure. Maybe that's what it's for, for the mirror, this this tech. Then we'll find out, I guess. Cause uh, I mean... I don't think it is, but... Yeah. But we saw people playing the broomstick in Master's Tour Ogrimmar. Not a lot has changed since then. And those people definitely had better turns against the Warrior. But they still ended up losing most of the time, the ones we saw, at least. Um, that was instead of Penflingers at the time, before Neophyte yeah. was really... Proved to be the obviously best card. Uh, we never saw the Ticketmaster, or very rarely saw the Ticketmaster comboed with a broom, so it does make sense. Um, but those decks vanished after the Masters Tour, which is usually a sign that, yeah, we didn't know, we tried it, it didn't work as well as we hoped. So we put it on the back burner. So many options. Oh, Ticketmaster coming in clutch right now. Hmm. Honestly, do you just let Briarthorn value trade? Or do you just man crick and then say, I'll try again later and shadow step the Octobot? Yeah, like you've got to value how much is that shadow step worth compared to reducing a hand. Obviously, reducing a hand is amazing, but shadow step is one of your better cards. Yeah. I think this is the answer. Of course, if you win, you win, right? So the stabs, something you don't want to waste, but it's done a good job here. Whoa! Tickets, please, Monsanto. Oh! All right, so I was about to say. Looks a lot move. better now. He's picked up that field contact as well. Yep. So now his field contact, Foxy Fraud. Next draw is going to tell us a lot because Monsanto can draw his deck. Yeah, basically. Uh, potentially. All hinges on what that next draw is. Time for some plush bears. Right. Yep. Oh, that's a man crick. That one's good. Oh. 
That's interesting as well. Could go Octobot, Og Merchant, Og Merchant, and then value trade over the Mancrick on the other side. Have like this weird wide board. But it seems like the theme of his deck is to play cards that shuffle more things into his deck. <laughs> and we know Briarthorn's all about themes. He loves a theme. Yeah, if I know anything about Briarthorn is that, boy does he love themes. This plays a little better because the Octobot now reduces actual cards and not fake cards. Oh! Whoa. He's going! Care to make a wager, friend. TJ's going, Monsanto's going. They're all going. That, one, th that one's not good. Looking for a combo card. Not one of those. Oh, he's re he's really thinking about. Because <laughs> if he shadow steps a foxy fraud and doesn't hit something playable, he's in a tight spot. There are a lot of playable stuff left in his deck. He's got another brain for his guardian yeah, og merchant, prize plunder, swindle, tenwu, Vanessa. One. One thief. Thief. I think the um, the equation there was I'm in a tight spot anyway so what harm is he gonna do like yeah you don't lose one thief again you lose flamstruck oh fireball okay Initiating overdrive. now briarthorn gets to do this yeah oh man everything Plus and this is going to be, be plus. Oh, so many the bears. bears. Is he going to ten with this? So many bears. Oh, he could Come ten with it and then broomstick it. Oh, this is good. You okay there, TJ? Oh man, I just there's so many cards being played. Oh, it's a ticket. I'm just laughing happily to myself because this is really enjoyable. <laughs> Probably not so enjoyable for, for Monsanto who's got to, to watch this, but this Octobot is going to Octo Fox. I think he, he Shadow Step first, yeah. Yeah, because he wants more cards reduced. Yep. You Shadow Step this, you kill the Foxy Fraud, now you Octobot, now you Broomstick, get another draw, pull another bear. Yeah. Oh, it's a ticket! Oh, man! It's just good! Monsanto wants that fireball to turn into the flame strike he didn't take. I mean, he it, it, it was going to be one turn later, so it wouldn't have been able to deal with this board. I know. But, I mean, you know, I think can't that's deal with just... It ever now. Yeah, true. I think that was just a checkmate turn for Briarthorn. Right. I'm not saying the Flame Strike would win the game because he takes a lot of damage and then he Flame Strikes and then Briarthorn does it again. But, but it's only a minor comment. It might even be wrong because Fireball is damage, obviously. But yeah, you know there's six bears in there. It's quiet. Too quiet. What can he turn back around? Nothing. Kind of it, isn't it? That's it. Like from where Monsanto sat, maybe Brythorn's hand hasn't got all this amazing stuff in it, but we can see he needed an absolute killer turn this turn, not just an okay turn. Oh! Wow. I mean, it's just not as exciting as a ticket, is it? It's not, is it? It should be, but... Those tickets are great. Now he's scored yeah, for choice. <laughs> he's got so yeah. many plays. I think I think the play this turn is make sure you finish your turn, whatever you choose to do. Yeah, I think it's Jandis is quite good here. 
<laughs> uh, where's the broom when you need it for your lake thresher to just clear everything off? When Brythorn's decks do their thing, oh, do they do their thing. All right, well, Monsanto is out of field contacts. Yeah. He's going to be out on his feet if he doesn't clear up most of this board. So that's going to leave him with nothing. Stab. Ability to burst is not quite there. Efficient is sufficient. Okay. okay. Well, sure. Can reduce these. Yeah, he needs to concentrate on reducing how much stuff Brythorn has, though. How much stuff? Hmm. I'll you soon. Give me that. Love what I'm initiating overdrive. Hmm. Just shadow set the plunder again. Come, friend. Let's see what you've got. Give me that. <laughs> Love what I, I don't think he got the attack off with Ogro. I never saw the arrow. Have a look. Yep. He did not. Did not. Is this lethal? Now it's time oh, for some Oh, no. Is this lethal with the. No, it's not turn 10. It's nowhere near turn 10. It's still lethal, Neil. You had it right the first time, so don't second guess yourself. It's exactly 19. It's 10, 13, 14. Oh, yeah, because I missed the turn 10. I missed the hero power. Indeed. Yep. There it is. All right. Well, Sato tried, but Briarthorn's Miracle Rogue just too strong. And maybe that's what it's for, right? The, the mirror match also being able to keep going after boards like that, but um, tough to call. Come about if it is for the mirror. Like we've seen a sample size of one, so it's hard to call, like you say. But if you yep. start off with this is a four-three, it challenges Octobot. Rather, forget all the rest of the theme. If you just start off with what's a good four attack minion for the mirror, and work backwards from there, suddenly it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. No, you're absolutely correct. Um, and it worked out. Firethorn taking the win there. Still an uphill climb though. Has Rush Warrior and Spell Mage to get through. And he does sacrifice some percentage points against uh, Spell Mage because uh, not playing Cold Neophytes to interrupt those power turns. Malfato never having to worry about Cold, uh, cold Neophytes. And although uh, we said that, you know, this will help against Rush Warrior, and it definitely will. You can see how flying, angry pink bears going into rush minions will be a problem with your two brooms. Yep. You only have two brooms unless you're shadow stepping a broom, which doesn't feel like a thing you want to be doing. So you basically have two brooms and warrior has rush minions all of the rest of the time. Yeah, Matato's playing an interesting version of Rush Warrior himself. Uh, not too much has changed. Did decide to uh, cut a War Maw Challenger and a Tent Trasher from the uh, standard list and add two Ogre Mancers. Okay. Which uh, isn't like the best against Rogue, but can still help if you already have board to make sure that you continue to have board. However, it just so happens that Briarthorn's Rogue is light on the spells. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, in fact, he has one, two, three, four, so eight. Eight spells in the deck. Um, two Shadow Steps, two Secret Passage, two Swindles, two Wicked Stabs, and that's it. Obviously, things from Wand Thief uh, can also be counted as uh, spells. But his ability to come back on a board is not reliant on 
the brain freezes and cheap tempo like that is relying on the animated broomsticks, which is much better into Ogre Mancer. So not only did he gain some points against Rush Warrior in general with the way he's built his Miracle Rogue, he's also uh, coincidentally gained some percentage points against Monsanto's specific build of Rush Warrior. So I think we're much closer to 50-50 in this matchup than we would be if it was standard Miracle Rogue versus standard uh, Rush Warrior. That matchup, I know that Rogue players like to think that they can win that matchup semi-regularly, but that matchup is so one-sided in my opinion. Like The the Warrior is just good in, in that matchup. I don't think Warrior is that good against many things, but it's, it's good against Rogue in particular. And Monsanto's yeah. got a lot of the good stuff in his opener here for, for keeping his opponent off the board. He doesn't want it. He's looking for something that I'm not seeing. Maybe he wants to get Parade Leader. Well, Imprisoned Ganarg, Parade Leader, yeah. cars, Stage Dives. Those are the, the cards sure. you're looking for. Rakara against Rogue is pretty good. Um, especially one that doesn't play Brain Freeze. I guess, yeah. This is not the hand he wants, though. This hand is... Okay. <laughs> All right, suck it up. Play the crab Get rider. With. Hit the, Otherwise, you do nothing. Hit the Octobot. Got double stage dive. Also has the ability to coin tent trasher. So he's got some power lined up. Hmm. What are you thinking, Brythorn? <laughs> he could go Mancrick, Shadow Step, Mancrick. Yep. And then next turn, value trade with Mancrick, and then Tenwu, Mancrick. <laughs> You could also go just like Mancrick animated oh, broomstick and then Tenwu the animated broomstick. I don't know. There's there, the the simplest play is just to play the Mancrick. <laughs> yeah, and use a shadow step maybe with with a mind to maybe shadow step in your Kazakas next turn or just playing Kazakas. Yeah. What happens? Yeah. Yeah. I think just going with level one, just play the Mancrick is good enough. And, and take your hands off the mouse and step away. Yeah. All right. Um, er, coin ten trasher is decent. It really looks like a good solution to the current spot he's in. Unless he wants to coin five into five and mess around yeah. for turn and just give up board for one turn. Yeah, stage dive could hit anywhere from bumper car. Actually, there's oh, no. two bumper car, Blade Master Samuro, and Run Thack. That's it. It's the only rush means left on the deck. Oh, Rakara. Excuse me, Rakara. So five. Okay. Blade Master Samuro, at not that bad of a pickup, but obviously not this turn. The only one that would really be playable this turn would be bumper car. And even then, that's not fantastic. And it's a two out of five. It's Samuro. So, and because he didn't hit bumper car, just going to have to go for the double stage dive and yep. call it a day. But now he has got a lot more versatility. If he just played um, Coin Trasher, which is kind of the obvious play, then the yep. next turn he'd have to have messed around with the stage dives and stuff anyway a lot of the time. And then he never gets the Ogre Man or the Watley down because he's always fighting for board. This way, gets him there a lot quicker, sacrifices the, the Trasher a little bit, but gives him so many more options. But he's now going to be behind on board for two or three turns a lot of the time. Except he's not because he's got the Blade Master. Gotta really think about this one, though. I mean, yeah, he's 
Yeah. So you this got? is a much smaller board than Blade Master has the potential of clearing, mm -hmm. but he would be left with a three six on board, which is a lot better than the alternative of. I don't even know what this play would be. Bumper car. Oh. Yeah. No. This. It's. He could get greedy and Watley here. Watching him hover over the cards there, I think he's saving coin for Troublemaker. I may have read that situation completely wrong, but now he's picked on this Troublemaker. That, that got hovered over in his counting of the next three turns. I don't know about that. Troublemaker is hard to play against Rogue. Yeah, it may have just been how he was how he was thinking out loud. Okay, hey, what's this golem? Something summon a copy. Stealth summon a copy. Oof. That's a lot. Monsanto well, is gonna die. Yes. I think that's um thing that could definitely happen here. Actually he had outs there, didn't he, I think? If he'd drawn a parade leader there, that's what he was sort of praying for. <laughs> he'd actually been able to summon. Yeah, which is still a possibility. But this turn is just kind of rough. Because got nine cards in hand. So Watley wouldn't even get full value. I guess he could coin Watley and then dump a Dark Moon Rider. Yeah. Uh, actually, no. Wait. No, yeah. He still has a bumper car left in the deck. So it would be he would draw a bumper car, Alex Straza, and a Sword Eater. So is he going to go playmaker, rider, rider? Is that what he's thinking here? So that next turn he's got enough riders to do two damage to the five fives, and then he can get the blade master to finish them off or something along those lines. Yeah. And also, it puts like a must kill target with the playmaker on board, spreads out his threats as much as he possibly can. But the broom. Oh my. Come, friend. More five fives. So, oh, then he, he could shadow step to ten woo, and then do it again. <laughs> he <laughs> needs more five fives. He needs parade leader, right? That's going to be the only out at this rate. Yeah, parade leader. Two out of nineteen, roughly a one in ten. Oh, I wonder why he didn't just go for field contact that turn. Hmm. I mean, this sets up lethal. Well, yeah, but he could have done do, done all this and also drawn a ton of cards. Monsanto just doesn't want to know. He's had enough of that, which is interesting because... Wait, if he drawn Parade Leader, there would have been five. I'm not crazy, right? That would have been a five. He, he's got the money. Yeah, because it was a three seven and he had enough mana to go Parade Leader right. plus attack into something. What? All right. Next game is Mage versus Rogue. And then I feel like Briarthorn could have just played field content that turn and just had a bunch of reload. <laughs> like he 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 was he left that turn with exactly three mana at the at the very end. So he could have done all that and just had twelve cards in deck and everything else in his hand. His last turn, he didn't trade away all of his non stealth Yeah, see, look. Because then what does he yeah, do yeah. with this, the, the extra mana here? He would have played Ticketmaster? I would have much rather had four extra cards in my hand. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, game five it is. Uh, Mage versus the Miracle Rogue from Briarthorn. Uh, this is the matchup that we talked about. Briarthorn sacrifice of percentage points in. Yes. Monsanto also playing a decent version to be going up against Rogue. He's got Deck of Lunacy as well as Shooting Star. Ah, well, the Deck of Lunacy is arguable whether or not it helps against Rogue. Um, 
It's mostly for like the super fast decks, and I don't consider Rogue to be one of those in the current metagame. I'm talking about like bad matchup ones. Mm -hmm. um, but Shooting Star certainly helps. This matchup's weird to me. Like, whenever I see it, I always feel like the mage should just blow the rogue off the park. And it just isn't like that. Obviously, without the near fight, like you've described multiple times, it's definitely more like that. But the rogue can get so much in there. The shooting star is only a one off. It's going to be interesting. You said that Brythorn needs to get this done with this deck, TJ. Is he going to do it? He's getting it done. But this is his toughest test. The mage. So, uh, I I think on paper I would just give it to Monsanto because I just the animated broomsticks just don't feel like they do enough. Sure. And there's no cold neophytes. Uh, but it, in ticket masters, like they just you just plop it on the board and that's it. It's a four three that makes bears. What more is there to, to dislike? Is this the first time that Monsanto has appeared on stream in this season without the hat? The hat has gone, has has fled, like got to him? Has he stolen the hat powers? Like fled, won his group without any trouble, 3-0, 3-0, after doing a hat cosplay of Monsanto. And now Monsanto comes onto stream without the hat and concedes when he's not dead. Maybe he saw the card and we didn't. That's that's possible. The turn hadn't ended yet. Brian thought we're still taking actions. It's the hat. All right, the hat's gone. Interesting opening hand for Monsanto. Um, Devolving Missile is fantastic against against Rogue, but it's not a Canter's Flow. Bonnet Power, great card to have in your, have in your opening hand. It's not a Canter's Flow. Keeps Fauna Power Devolving Missiles. Hits a Canter's Flow anyway. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Keep the good cards and draw in Cantor's Flow. Why would you do it any other way? Call a doctor because Monsanto is sick. Nice. But now, which order do you play them in? Ooh. Uh, you're asking the tough questions now. If you expect a turn two Octobot, then you'd coin in Canter's Flow. Because Brides are two kept, by the way. Ticketmaster and Field Contact. So Monsanto was is expecting Octobot. Yeah. Um, and so if he expects that, then he's going to go coin in Canter's Flow on one, then Font to Power Devolving Missiles, the expected Octobot on two. But alas, Briarthorn has pulled the ultimate trick out of his bag. And that trick is. No, no, I'm watching I took, Lunacy. I, I two kept three drops. Uh huh. That's his trick. That is a good trick. He is the Tricket Master. It wasn't the Octopod at all. <laughs> it was the field contact all along. Okay, multiple spell damage sources and a Raz Frost Whisper picked up from the. Uh, uh, Fauna Power is quite good as well. I'm just looking at Monsanto's hand thinking he's got all the best mage cards in the entirety of Hearthstone ever in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> Monsanto has just, like, sighed because he saw this was one of the cards that was kept in his opening hand. And now he hasn't got a clue what the other one is. What to do? What to do? Absolutely hasn't got a Scooby what is going. Oh, it just, no, he doesn't care. He's just going to deck of lunacy. Yep. If you're going to play nonsense, I'm going to play nonsense. Ha. Oh. The ultimate oh. <laughs> the ultimate trick. <laughs> right the after you think that I don't have the efficient Octobot. I've picked one up from my deck. <laughs> to be fair, Monsanto did that with the Flow and the Lunacy, so fair's fair. At the Dark Moon Fair. Oh. Efficient is sufficient. 
Choosing to keep his broom. Give me that. Love what I'm initiating overdrive. And next turn, he's going for it. That ain't it. Well, I, I've. <laughs> it's gonna be funny if Monsanto just plays out this game, and it, he just would have been better off not having played Deck of Lunacy. Especially if he hits this Octobot three times. All right. It's always a possibility. Bythorn has now just become a paladin. Um, Ashermancer Solarian. There are, especially with one in Carousel Play, there are a lot of minion in the deck type spells. Yep. Commencement is one of them in his hand. Uh, loads. Not loads, but no, I don't know if he'd want to pull it out of his deck with Commencement unless he's going to die the next turn. But there is some. Already has a lab partner. Whatever he, whatever he does, he wants to hold on to this uh, spell damage, I think, for the ability to go Raz next turn if Briarthorn goes wide, which he, he is going to here with uh, Field Contact. Yeah, that's going to work out nicely for Monsanto. There are only eight spells in Briarthorn's deck. He's checking, but I know already how many spells are in his deck because I'm a genius. And also, yeah, because I told you! <laughs> Uh, oh. Ooh, Jandis. Jandis! Yay! Jandis Barov. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. Fawn of Power. Yep. That's another Want Thief. Mm hmm. Another Mage Belt. Was it Python that used to play Font of Power anyway? Even when he played minions in his deck? Back in the day. Somebody did. I think it was Briarthorn. Uh, probably. That seems like something that he would do. Yeah. I think he was in Cyclone Mage. He just played a oh. power. Feed his circle! It's so good now. Why now? Because it costs zero? What to do? What to do? <laughs> oh, because it got buffed! Uh-huh. True mastery takes dedication. Four instead of three, was it before? No, it's just three mana now. Oh yeah, because zero. That was my sarcasm in the first place. Damn it. I yeah, stayed exactly. with the, the sarcasm. Yeah, your sarcasm was correct. <laughs> I need to have more self-confidence. It sounds like my sarcasm is correct more often than I realize. Why? Because it's free? Yes, that's exactly why. <sighs> Oh, Reckless Apprentice? What? It's like a board clear. <laughs> how do you... Oh, never mind. No, it's not. It's not a mage minion. Opponents. Just Yeah, how does that work with Rogue? I <laughs> you, do, do you, you attack them all? That would be amazing. That would just be so good if they could sort of hard code because with, one of these. With yeah. every... Oh, no, no. It just uses the hero power a bunch of times. So you just re-equip the dagger for every minion on board. I would like it though if cards like that were like hard coded to have an ability for each hero power. I mean, he picked it because yeah, it just uses the hero power for for every minion that's on board. That's fine. We get to see some animations and maybe Monsanto lags out. I mean, why is your hero power? What were the what were even the other options? They were all really grim. Was there a Phoenix in there maybe? No, because he would have taken it. You were too busy entertaining me, TJ, and I missed what he was actually doing. And then he did it, so it was fine. Alright, what do we got here? Bunch of stuff that builds a board. Horse of nature. Yeah. Eventually, Derish. you live long enough to become the druid. Another flame strike. Okay, cycle of hatred is great. Runs out on me. Uh. 
So we can lab partner Molten Blast Holy Nova. Just have a huge board. I mean, I say huge, but it's actually quite small. Yeah, it's gonna get um, Reckless Apprentice. Oh no, no, it's not. But you know. Yeah, because I've I've actually never seen it in Rogue, but if it works the same way that every other Reckless Apprentice works, it just uses the hero power once for each minion. Um. Like for Hunter, if there's seven minions on board. Pew! 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 <laughs> Don't care! <laughs> oh my god! What in the world just happened? He just used. Pew! Pew! He did it! Seven hero powers with Rogue in one turn. I'm surprised he didn't um, save the Tenwu to bounce it and do it again. I mean, there's no question about it. He he just thought that was going to shoot Mage Hero powers. It's a really weird card because you see it most of the time in Mage, but in every other class, it just uses the hero power for every minion that's on board. Or, in this case, for every enemy, right? Now, if he had... Now, the sickest thing would be if he had Yoink... And yoinked a hunter hero power. Oh. He just would have dealt 16 points of damage to Monsanto. Oh. And still lost. Yeah. It would have been, it would have been great. But there's also the option he didn't know, and he thought, well, I'm losing this game, so I might as well try it. I, guess. I didn't know. I assumed, but I didn't know. Oh, man. What a way to go out. An, an awkward way to end things, because <laughs> you know, obviously hard. that. Yeah, to not laugh. Yeah. Uh, just an awkward way to end things because um, that is just like an interaction question, right? Uh, if even if we give him the benefit of the doubt and say he knows that that's how Reckless Apprentice works when you're playing it outside of Mage, that that was just not the best play you could have made that turn, right? Right. Um, and not even the best choice from the Font of Power, which was like Rhyme Tongue, which a 3-4 is better than nothing, or Star Scryer, which drawing a spell from your deck is better than nothing. Um, but uh, Briar Thorn, because of that, I mean, it, you know, maybe he loses that game anyway, right? Monsanto had Libra of Hope, had more draw, had a, uh, yeah. another way to b build up an additional board with Day at the Fair. Um, maybe he loses that game anyway. But when you play Deck of Lunacy with uh, one in Canterfield being played, you're hitting a lot of like removal and draw. And your ability to generate minions is usually pretty limited outside of your seven cost things with Double Libra of Hope. Uh, but it's really just for those matchups where you're, you're 